2 Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse 1, <laughs> which I usually do anyway. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh, before I go, I want to share this as an explanation or a precursor or whatever to let you know why I'm, I'm focusing on some of these types of subjects right now. Number one, we're in the last days. We know Jesus, we have no idea when he's coming. Some of us have an idea, but we really don't know. And we want to make sure that we're not found wanting when he comes. We don't want any, any sin or any weight to beset us. And we want to know when Jesus comes down through the clouds to pull us up, there's not going to be anything tying us to this earth that stops us from being able to go and be with him. Nothing between us. Nothing short-circuiting the relationship. You hear, you hear what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to do is make sure that we constantly examine ourselves. We can talk about the last days. We can talk about current events. We can talk about corona. We can talk about the vaccines. But the most important thing to deal with is self holiness, and being ready when Christ comes. That is the ultimate right there. We can know everything about Trump, know everything about Biden, the Democrats, and it's hot and juicy. And we love talking about it. But we need to concentrate on getting our vessels prepared for God. Amen? Because after all is said and done and the dust settled, when he comes and goes, we don't want to be sitting down here on our behinds crying and weeping because we don't know what went wrong. Because we were focusing on the wrong thing rather than getting ourselves prepared individually. All right, let me go to verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this world, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. All right? The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. All right, I'm going to stop there. Listen, you guys. There's a scripture where Jesus said, he who puts his hand to the plow, which means you ought to push that plow forward. You ought to be moving forward, pressing in. All your energy should be going forward. He says, he that puts his hand to the plow and looks back, is not worthy of the kingdom of God. You hear me? So, what we have to do is make sure that nothing from our past becomes a hindrance to our destiny. Nothing in here blocks what God wants to do out there. See, a lot of things that we don't do is examine ourselves. A lot of times we feel like, okay, I ask God to forgive me for all my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, I'm good. That's always just the, the doorknob. That's cracking the door open. But once you open that door, baby, there's a whole lot behind door number one, door number two, door number three that God wants us to contend with. And what's behind that door is what's in our hearts, 
what's in our minds, see, what's in our spirit. And there are times we don't want to deal with some things. So we have to ask God, renew a right spirit in me. We got to ask God, examine my heart. We've got to ask God, show me if there be any wicked way in me. We have to constantly ask God for a reassessment, for a diagnostic test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to ask God to hold the supernatural mirror up in front of us so we know what's wrong. Oh, I forgot to put my shoes on. Oh, I forgot to put my gloves on. Oh, my goodness. My zipper's down. Oh, my buttons. Oh, let me get myself together. And see, it's not a physical thing. I'm just talking in examples, figuratively. So when you are getting yourself prepared for the master's use, you want to make sure that you are a vessel of honor. You ever see, check this out. You guys ever see somebody come in the store and let's say they're on the heavy side. I'm not putting heavy down. I'm just saying they're on the heavy side. They don't really know how they really look. <laughs> they're, they're in denial. You know, they see a nice, pretty, sh shapely body and everybody else sees a blob. Well, here they are coming in the store and everybody's like, whoa, what? What is that? And they've got this skin tight. I know you guys have seen some of them. They got this skin tight uh, spandex outfit on that hugs every curve, hugs every tire, hugs every dimple of cellulite, hugs everything. And you're looking in horror. How could they allow themselves to be seen like that? That is so unsightly. It's not the weight that's unsightly. It's how they expose the ugly parts of being overweight. They have 12 inches of cleavage. They're hanging down to their knees. They can carry a tray of food on their back. Everything is out there, and they are emphasizing how far out it really is. And they look like a sausage where if they move too much, the whole thing might just just uh, rip off of them and everything will be exposed. I mean, it, it looks that scary at times. Well, that's the way some born-again Christians are in their walk with God. They present themselves to the world as a born-again Christian. They take the Bible, they put it under their arm, they have a cross hanging on their neck, and they advertise for God for a minute. And they're driving down the street and they're about to run people off the road because they're driving too slow and they're bah, 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 get out of the way. And they're showing this ugly side, this ugly demeanor, this angry. You're like, where did that angry monster come from? Just like we look at the woman that walks in like a sausage and we're like where the heck did that horrible thing come from that's horrible she needs to go home and get dressed well we feel that way about christians that misrepresent god and the reason they misrepresent god is because they're not dealing with what's going on in here the man in the mirror I know you guys have heard Michael Jackson's song, The Man in the Mirror. Many of us do not deal with the man in the mirror. We don't deal with that. We deal with him. Hmm. And we deal with her. Mm -hmm. And we got our attitudes, y'all, about how jacked up, messed up, toe up from the flow up they are. But we don't see us. Do we? You ever get in the room and you smell some onions and you're like, whoa, somebody forgot to put the deodorant on. Mm -hmm. Or it smells musty in here like a boy's gym. Woo! Somebody needs to splash some water on it, right? We don't smell it when we stink, do we? That's right. So 
What I want you to think about is what God says about being a vessel of honor. Verse 15 of the same chapter, 2 Timothy 2. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now, you know why you got to study to show yourself approved? If you don't know that God wants you to forgive at all times, you're going to be one bitter person. If you don't know that God wants you to treat each other with love and mercy, you're going to be an ugly person to deal with, a hard one to tangle with. All right. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. I remember a woman said that they were at the hospital and they saw some nurses with braids and they took the scripture totally out of context. The meaning of the scripture was, don't focus on your outer appearance for your beauty. It's your inner beauty that's beautiful. And they took it and made it a law and told the women they should never wear braids. See, we have to be careful about taking the word and turning it into a legalized weapon that literally beats people away. You know how you how you beat the bushes to get some rodents out of your yard. Sometimes we're beating the bushes trying to evangelize, but we're literally running people out of the kingdom because we have too much legalism. We're, we're pounding on top of them with the do's and the don'ts and the don'ts and the do's and your can'ts and the, and the, and the nevers. And, 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 and that's not what it was supposed to be about. Some things are about modesty, and some things are about focus and principle. And we turn it into a law. Nobody should wear braids. No, that's not the case. It's not to be the focus of a woman's beauty, of the outward appearance, with the jewelry, the makeup, and the hair, and the, and the dangles, and the spangles, and the sparkle, and the glitter. That's not our, our focus. And nowadays you can see what happens when we don't follow that scripture. Women are worshipers of beauty. They're worshipers. Selfie, selfie, selfie. Look at me. They're taking a picture of a product and they're looking at the camera at themselves. And the camera's got them and the product is lost in the sauce because they're so busy. Look at me, world. Ain't I pretty? Ain't I gorgeous? Look at me. Look at my long hair. I bought it online. Oh, yeah. Look at my eyelashes. Yeah, they're magnetic. Look at my nails. They're 10 inches long and I can still type with them. Aren't I beautiful? Beauty. Beauty. Gorgeous. Yeah, that's what the Bible says not to focus on. Not not to braid your hair. It's practical. You got to keep your hair up. I mean, it, it, it just gets to the point where people would tie you up in knots. And all that liberty you had, uh-huh, gone. And you're bound by other folks. And that's not what God wanted. And he doesn't want us to do that to people. Starting at verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Verse 22, flee also youthful lust but follow righteousness, faith, charity, which is love, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, let's go back to verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor. Listen, 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 listen. We are constantly waiting on God to do everything. Think about that. Think about that. Now, you kids, I know when you get up in the morning, right, 
and you look for key to help you do some things, or you look for your mother to help you to do things. And there are times when your parents will say, tie your shoes, don't they? They tell you to tie your shoes. They tell you, make sure you brush your teeth, right? Mommy and daddy ain't brushing your teeth. Big sister ain't brushing your teeth. You got to go in the bathroom and brush your own, don't you, you guys? Right. You got to button up your own clothes, get dressed, and the mommy's going to check and make sure you're dressed correctly for the weather and you're dressed appropriately for school, right? Now, and your clothes are clean. They're going to make sure you're presentable. Let me see your hair. Did you wash behind your ears? They check all that stuff. Let me see your nails, right? But you're the one they tell to go in the bathroom and do all that because you're not two years old. You're seven, eight, nine, ten. You're able to do it yourself. Well, see, we forget when we walk with the Lord that we are no longer babies. And we don't need God to clean our ears. We don't need God to pick our nose. We don't need God to clean under our nails. We don't need God to wipe the deodorant under us. We don't need God to put our clothes on. No. We are to put on the armor of God. We are to put on the armor. We are to always be armed with his armor. We are always to be armed with holiness, filled with love, acting in mercy, presenting, representing God. As the kids say, represent, baby. We've got to represent in a way that makes people look at us without us even saying anything, saying, that must be, that must be somebody who knows God. Now that is what I think a Christian ought to act like. Wow, look at them. Beautiful. And sometimes people are asking, are you a Christian? Because you sure act like one. Right. But you don't want to be out there and people are saying, hey, look at that. They call themselves a Christian. <laughs> Boy, if that's a Christian, never mind. I'll stay a sinner. That's not a good testimony, y'all. You want to be a vessel of honor. And the vessel of honor must cleanse himself. Did you see what it said? It didn't say, stand there with your hands up in the air, helplessly, like a little two-year-old. Daddy, get me dressed. Glad, Daddy, clean me up. Daddy, I think I made a boo-boo on myself. Help me, Daddy. No, Daddy's going to tell you to go in the bathroom. You're 12 years old. You know how to use the toilet paper for yourself. You know how to go to the bathroom and sit on the pot. Time out for wearing diapers. You hear what I'm saying? But see, a lot of times what Christians do is they sin, 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 tinker with sin, play with sin, watch sin, whatever. And they're waiting for God to do all the cleaning. God is waiting for them to do all the cleaning because they've grown. They're not helpless anymore. They can feed themselves, wash themselves, clothe themselves. And the way you clothe yourself is in holiness. You clothe, you put on Christ. Just like I put on my coat. I didn't need somebody to come over here and put my coat on me. I put on my own coat. Right? That's the way we ought to put on Christ. And when we put on Christ, we walk out that door with a heart full of love, a heart full of mercy, patience, kindness, temperance, self-control. Life will get on your nerves. Life, people will get you upset. That doesn't, the Bible doesn't say don't get upset. Right? As the child read. Be angry and sin not. You can be angry, but don't take it to sin. Don't give place to the devil because you got a little uptight. No, ask God, take the anger out. Then you don't have to react to it. See, so, you know, what we do is 
there are things that only God can do. And you ask him, you, you take advantage of that. You ask him every time. But what you can do for yourself, he's going to sit there with his arms folded waiting for you to do it. And you will trip over your own two feet and mess up and screw up and mistake and blow it and fail over and over and over until you realize, oh, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Ha! Huh. We think the spirit of the prophet is subject, the gift of the prophet is subject to God. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So you have control over whether you open your mouth and let it fly or whether you seal your lips and let the Holy Spirit have his way. Whether you open your mouth and go toe to toe, cuss word for cuss word, insult for insult. You tell me off, I tell you off. You make me mad, I make you mad. Or... Or you, you spite me, I spite you. I got some revenge, baby, you ain't heard of. You don't want to get on my bad side, right? You shouldn't have a bad side. <laughs> that bad side should be dead, buried, because you are risen with Christ, not risen with flesh. You're risen with Christ. So when you're risen with Christ, you use the self-control the Holy Spirit gave you. And when you hear somebody going off, talking a fool, acting a fool, looking a fool, you keep your mouth shut. The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. A fool feels more like a fool when you don't engage him in an argument. There's a thing called a dialogue and a monologue. That person, blah, 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 you keep your mouth shut and let them go on. Don't worry about how everybody else looks at you. If everybody else is a fool and laughs at what they're saying and they're being entertained at your expense, keep your mouth shut. You don't have to prove anything to them. You have to prove yourself to God and God alone. And one day they'll remember. Oh, I remember I saw a Christian. Mm -hmm. They could have jumped in and, 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 and took that person to the ground, but they walked away. I remember everybody was laughing at them, including me, but they did not let that fool get them entangled in their mess. Now, that was a Christian. They may have been laughing at the moment, but when they look back in retrospect, they'll know. Now, that was the real Christian right there. Hmm. So you want to be a vessel of honor for God. In private, where nobody's looking, and in the public side. Because, see, the Bible says God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So remember that when you think nobody knows and nobody's looking. Amen? All right. So that's it. You just ask God to help you be your best. Now, everybody's not going to be at a high level all the time because we're all at different stages of growth. But live what you know. Live what you know. Don't stoop down and go back to second grade when your knowledge is at a 12th grade level. Just because you know you're living in the dispensation of mercy and grace. No, no, don't take advantage because God is not a patsy. All right. So you want to make sure that even in your own heart, you know, you're being true blue. You know, you're not playing with God. You know you're not stretching the envelope and playing on the edge and straddling the fence. You know you're not compromising in secret and acting holy in public. You know you're true blue. You know it. So you want to make sure in these last days, 
Yeah, we want to know what's going on with witchcraft, Trump, with the tarot cards, with the with the with stimulus checks. We want to know what's going on with the vaccines, with the with the mark of the beast, who the mark, who the beast is going to be, and all. We want to know all that. Yeah, we do. It's fascinating news. But the main thing you ought to consume yourself with is Father. Do I please you? Am I living a real holy life? Is there anything in my heart I don't recognize? Am I still bitter? Am I still angry? Do I still have a vindictive way about me? Do I still does my do I still allow my tongue to cut both ways and not under the anointing of God, but under the, the anointing of flesh and attitude? Do I still have rage in me? Huh? Have I not forgiven some folks? Mm -hmm. See, that's where you got to really come. You got to be willing to get buck naked before God in spirit and say, Lord, examine me head to toe. Don't let anything come between me and you. Don't let anything hinder me from leaving this planet when you come to call us up. You hear me? Amen. That's a challenge, ain't it? And it's an ongoing one. That's a challenge that never goes away. And that's why there's so much word in the Bible pertaining to be ye holy, for I am holy. God bless you. I'm done.